and mastered all traditional arts and sciences without needing any instruction. He also knew 64 different languages, each with their own alphabet, and was very skilled in mathematics. He once told his father that he could, that he could count all the atoms in the world at the same time it took to draw a single breath. Although he did not need to study, he did so to please his father and to benefit others. The prince would also take every opportunity to convey spiritual meanings and to encourage others to follow spiritual paths. At one time, when he was taking part in an archery contest, he declared, with the bow of meditative concentration, I will fire the arrow of wisdom and kill the tiger of ignorance living in, in living beings. He then released the arrow and it flew straight through the air through five iron tigers and seven trees before disappearing into the earth. By witnessing demonstrations such as this, thousands of people developed faith in the prince. Buddha means awakened one, someone who has awakened from the sleep of ignorance and sees all things as they are. Buddha is a person who is completely free from all faults and mental obstructions in his mind. He knows everything of the past, present, and future. Moreover, Buddha has great compassion, which is completely impartial, embracing all living beings without discrimination. Today, Veronica, Ozzy, and I will be discussing our speaker of choice, Buddha. We will explain why we chose him as our topic and why he and his teachings are significant. We will also explain some of his communication concepts and why he is, he is an inspiration to us and to his believers. It is nearly impossible to describe all the good qualities of Buddha. His compassion, wisdom, and power are completely beyond conception. This is why we chose Buddha as our historic speaker. With nothing left to obscure his mind, Buddha sees all phenomena throughout the universe as clearly as he sees a jewel held in the palm of his hand. Through the force of his compassion, Buddha does whatever is appropriate to benefit others. Seeing how all living beings are trapped in a vicious cycle of suffering, Buddha felt deep compassion and developed a wish to free all living beings of this suffering. Buddha has no need to think about what is the best way to help others. He naturally and effortlessly acts in the most beneficial way. Of all the ways in which, in which Buddha helps others, the supreme way is by emanation as a spiritual guide. Through meeting an emanation of Buddha, everyone will have the opportunity to enter the path to liberation and enlightenment. By Buddha emanating various forms throughout the universe, and by bestowing his blessings on people's minds, all beings, even the lowliest animals, can develop peaceful and virtuous states of mind. If we integrate Buddha's teachings into our daily life, we will be able to solve all of our inner problems and attain a truly peaceful mind. Without inner peace, outer peace is impossible. If we first establish peace within our minds by training in spiritual paths, outer peace will come naturally. But if we do not, world peace will never be achieved, no matter how many people campaign for it. This brings us to our second main point, the significance of Buddha's teachings. The significance of Buddha and Buddha's philosophy is the focus that one can obtain true pleasures, truth, goodness and permanence by attaining what's within us. There are three important concepts in, behind the Buddhist belief. The first is karma, which is basically a law of cause and effect. The belief is that a person, well, that whatever a person puts out in his present life is, um, affects the way his future life is gonna be. And Buddha taught that whatever, that like, if you act good, your future life will be good. If you act bad, your future life will be bad. And it all depends just on your feelings and actions that you put forth. The second concept is samsara, which is a cycle of birth, death, and rebirth. And the Buddhist belief is also that a person does not have a soul, that a soul is just a dream and illusion. What the person has is a set of feelings, actions, and karma, and that's what goes through the rebirth cycle. And also, samsara and karma go together, and they affect your life in the future. And the last one and most important is nirvana. Nirvana is where karma and samsara come to an end. The Buddhist belief is that everyone goes through a cycle of rebirth and death. And you can only end that once you reach nirvana, which is a state of peace and everlasting bliss, which we can obtain through self-effort. 
To obtain nirvana, we need to release all of our materialistic desires and egos and live a pure, calm, nice life. A person must focus one's effort to meditation, and only then, and then only, can they, can they come into a state of transcending consciousness. And Buddha's teachings are significant because they persuade a person to live a better life. They're persuaded to live a better life by being more kind and treating others with respect and being good because the way you treat others is going to affect you. Also, Buddha preaches to cause no harm to others. He persuades that to truly be at peace and at eternal bliss, one needs to let go of all material objectives and seek for the light within us because inside us is where true bliss lives. So Buddha teaches us how to live a good life. But he also, so moving on to the third point, Buddha acquires many communication concepts that we still use today. Buddha was an influential philosopher. His influential ability made him a great communicator, and he used many concepts that we still use today. The first one was that he used language that we all easily understand. His messages were appealing, and they were clear and precise. He didn't play with his words. He didn't go around the subject. He had a message to give, and he gave it. Also, he preached to speak the truth and the truth only. He did not slander others, and he only said what he knew was true because he knew everything. And most importantly, Buddha knew his audience well. He knew the psychological background and the nature of his audience. And the way he spoke to them appealed to them and it related to them because he knew them well. And his speaking strategies were multifaceted and fascinated. He also used wit, humor, stories, tropes, and allegories to appeal to his characters better. He knew how to talk to them, he knew how to work with them. Everything he did appealed to them and related to them because he knew his audience well. And Buddha was an excellent speaker. He knew how to advertise his message. And with that said, we will move on to the fourth point, why he inspires us. <laughs>